Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is tips and tricks on how to apply your makeup for a more youthful look and also showing things that you might be doing that are actually not doing you any favors that might be making you look a little bit older. So I don't know if you can tell, but I've done each side of the face a little bit differently. This side of the face is gonna be tips and tricks on a more youthful appearance, and this side is things that you might be doing that are actually uh, working against you in terms of making you look a little bit younger. Uh, so, before we get started, I do wanna read a comment and question, uh, because I wanna start doing these in all my videos, so make sure you leave them down below. This question comes from Melina. She says, your skin looks great. You don't even need foundation. Thank you so much. However, I've seen people use concealer before applying foundation. Then there are others that use concealer after foundation. Can you tell me what's the difference, if any? This has always confused me. That is such a great question, and I really could go on and on about it and make it its own video. Uh, but I think, real briefly, I like to apply foundation first, typically, because what I find is that I like to see how much coverage I get from the foundation before I go in and use concealer. I think when we use concealer first, and we conceal under the eyes, and we conceal on the face, Sometimes what we conceal on the face might have been covered by the foundation anyway, and we're just applying more product unnecessarily, which kind of goes into the theme of this whole video that you guys are about to watch. So I personally like to apply foundation first and then go back and see if I need to conceal any other areas. But usually I'm pretty happy with the coverage that I get from foundation and I just apply my concealer under my eyes. Um, but you know, that's my personal way. So just because you do it the other way doesn't mean that it's wrong. That's just my thought process on that. So thank you so much for asking that question. Well, before we get started in the video, I want to mention that if you are not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and click that subscribe button and also that bell notification so that you are notified when I upload new videos. You would think that by subscribing to my channel, you'd be notified, but for some reason, YouTube decides that's not the case. So, um, all right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are, fresh face. I have eye makeup on clearly, but I have nothing on my skin. I did just hydrate my skin using the La La Retro Whipped by Drunk Elephant, which leads me into my first tip, is that always start your makeup with very, very hydrated skin. As we get older and mature, our skin loses moisture typically. Not always, but typically aging skin or older skin lacks moisture. So you wanna make sure that you have a really great moisturizer, something that leaves the skin feeling supple, something that the skin doesn't just soak up and drink up right away. Uh, I find that the La La Retro whipped cream is a great product for that. So I think how I'm going to do this video is I'm going to do, I'm going to demonstrate like what to do and what not to do on um, either side of the face so that you can really compare and see what I'm talking about. So for foundation, I think the number one tip that I have is just to not apply a foundation that is too heavy, that is more coverage that you need, that is too mattifying. Again, our skin lacks moisture as we get older and a very matte, heavy foundation is just going to emphasize and magnify any texture that you have in your skin. So whether that be fine lines lines or wrinkles or um, scarring or large pores. If you have a very heavy product that's very matte, you are just going to bring so much attention to that. And I think that that is something that a lot of people don't understand. Um, sometimes people that have uh, really acneic skin, not only do they have a lot of texture on the skin, but they have a lot of redness. So they have two things they need to cover. They need to cover the redness and the discoloration, but they also want to cover that texture. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to cover texture with makeup. Um, you can color, cover discoloration, you can cover that redness, but you really can't cover texture. I mean, there are some products that you can use to make things look a little bit more smoother, but when it comes to like, you know, pretty deep texture in the skin, it's very hard to cover it. So your goal is really not to magnify it. So that's why we don't use foundations that are too heavy. So uh, uh, one, I, I was just looking in my collection and one foundation that I have that is probably my most full coverage foundation is the Danessa Myricks Vision Cream Foundation. So this is not necessarily a bad product, but you don't want to, I wouldn't recommend using this by itself. This would be a great mixing medium. So you could mix it in with a moisturizer uh, to get a little bit more coverage, but you really do not want to go in with the face and apply something this heavy. So I'm going to show you. So I'm going in, I'm just going to apply this all over my face. You can see how full coverage that is. I mean, that is just erasing everything on my skin. You don't see any of my skin coming through. So I'm going to apply this all over and I'm going to apply it pretty liber liberally. Can I speak? Look how heavy that is, you guys. That is intense. So this is not necessarily a bad product, but you just want to use it carefully. You could use it as concealer. You could mix it with a moisturizer. You could use it if you're a performer and you're on stage. This would be a great product. But for day-to-day -day use, I would not recommend this product. All right, so... 
Okay, I don't know if you can see, but I can just really see all the pores on my skin. If I kind of go like this, you can see it's already settling in the lines. It just magnifies, look, when I smile, just magnifies every little line, especially when it dries and sets. What you do want to look for in a foundation is something that checks all your boxes. So everybody's skin is different. So for me to say that this foundation is perfect for everybody wouldn't be very fair. But I do think that this is a great foundation for mature skin that's more on the normal to dry side. It's the uh, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This gives pretty good coverage. It's not full coverage. The, the finish of this is natural. It's luminous. Okay, so what I like about this foundation is it really gives me the coverage that I need. I don't need full coverage. All I need is something to even out my skin tone, cover a little bit of discoloration, but I don't need full coverage. So, But as you get older, more is not better. And I think that sometimes we get older and we feel like we want to cover or hide more, so we want to apply more, but it really just works against us. So as you can see, this foundation does a really great job of just evening things out, but it is very lightweight. It looks very natural on the skin. I'm gonna put a little bit up here and then we're gonna compare the two sides here. I didn't have to use much. Okay, can you guys compare the two sides here and see any differences? I'm gonna pull this mirror up here so I can see. So when I smile or squinch my face, where do you see more texture? Do you see more pores here, more fine lines around my eyes than you do here? Everything is softer here. Now, you can see this definitely has more coverage, but I don't need it. It's not doing me any favors. So when it comes to concealer, a couple of mistakes that people make. Uh, I realize a lot of us have darkness under the eyes. I do as well, and we want to conceal that. One mistake that a lot of us make is we grab a concealer that is too light because our, I think in our heads we're thinking it's dark under there. I need something light and bright to cover it. But sometimes that can actually work against us. What you really want to do is color correct. So whether you use a product that's specifically a color corrector or you use a concealer that has a really peach undertone and is not too light. So it's maybe as dark as your skin, uh, that is going to conceal that, and then you can go in there and brighten it with a lighter brightener if you want. One product I've really been loving lately, and I just talked about this in a video that I just filmed, and I'm probably going to do another video on it, is the Color Science Total Eye 3-in-1 Renewal System. Stephanie Marie uh, was really kind of the one who introduced me to this, and it was oddly enough that after she raved about it, they reached out to me um, and sent me some. So this is great. It has an SPF of 35. It has this cooling tip applicator, so it really cools and soothes the eye area, and it's not too thick. You don't want to use too much, so that's another tip. You don't want to use too much concealer. Again, concealer tends to be one of the products that we use that has the most pigment because it is meant to cover so you want to be careful not to use too much so I'm going to use this underneath my eye and I'm going to use it on the dew side okay and then I'm just going to use my finger to blend that in you could also use a beauty blender that would be a really great way to absorb any excess and make it look a little bit more natural even I think that's a little too much so I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to go in and kind of wipe some of it away All right. Now, to be totally honest, I think that's all I need. I really don't think I need to go in and add a concealer. This product can be used as a color corrector and use a concealer on top of it. But in today's situation, I don't think I really even need to put a concealer over this. I think that this gives me the coverage and brightness that I want. Okay, what you don't want to do is grab a concealer and apply too much of it. So I absolutely love this concealer. Don't get mistaken. This is not a concealer that I am suggesting not to use. It's the Kevin Aquan, um, what is this called? It's the Supernatural Concealer. I love this product, but when you use too much, when you use too much of anything, it can go wrong quick. So that's what we're going to do here. We are going to apply a lot of this under the eye. You know what? What the heck? Let's just do it like we see in some of these YouTube videos showing you how to highlight Let's do it like that because I know we watch some of these beauty videos and they show you to like do this business, do this business around the nose, okay? Just see how that looks. It is crazy. It's too much makeup. All right, so now let's look at the two sides. I think you can clearly see a difference. This, this almost looks like a mask to me. This looks like my skin but better. So let's do the kind of squinch your face test. <laughs> really flattering, I know but I really want to show you guys what this looks like as your face makes expressions and how it settles. I mean, gosh, look at the under eye area there. Look how dry that is. I know some of you are probably laughing as I do this, but I feel like this is the best way to illustrate what the heavy makeup does to the skin. 
Okay, so the next tip I have is setting your under eye concealer. If this is a step that you do, some days I need it and some days I feel like I don't, but when I do, I always use something very sheer, very lightweight uh, to set my under eye area because, because again, powder just tends to magnify texture. Our under eye skin, I think I heard something like it's seven times thinner than the rest of the skin on our face. It's a very thin skin. It tends to be where we start to show the signs of aging quicker, so you don't want to apply anything that's going to make it look dry, dehydrated. Uh, so I'm using using the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. I like this powder because it's very sheer and lightweight. It also has like this most subtle light reflective quality. So it brightens the eye, under eye area very naturally. So I just get a little bit on a soft fluffy brush like this. I'm even gonna tap it off because I don't want any more than I need. Again, it's all about using what you need and not using more. And then I'm just gonna set my under eye area and then I will set just any area around my face that I think I need it. So for me, that really is the center of my face around my nose and then on my forehead. Okay, let's talk about what not to do. And again, this is a tip I think that we see in a lot of YouTube videos. I don't really see it so much anymore, but there definitely was a time for this, maybe last year or the year before. Baking. Baking became like the trend in the beauty community. And it's funny because I, when I was a makeup artist and I worked for MAC, this was a tip that a lot of makeup artists would use to basically catch fallout. So if they were doing a dramatic eye, they would apply a sheer layer of powder here to basically catch any eyeshadow that fell onto the skin so they could softly dust it away. And then as a result, they would also get a brightness there. Now, when I remember seeing that 10 years ago, 12 years ago in the makeup artistry community, it was a very soft sheer layer of powder. When it hit YouTube about two years ago, it became like this really heavy like powder under the eye. And that, my friends, is not going to do you any favors. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So it's taking a lot of a setting powder and it's just like applying it under the eye. And I'm making a mess. Like, I don't know how this, yeah, so people just apply tons and tons and tons of powder here, right? And they let it sit for, I don't know, 10 minutes as they do the rest of their makeup. And then they go and they dust it out later and it leaves this really bright under eye area. So I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit and we'll come back to that. Okay, let's talk about blush. So for me, I think a really nice, pretty peachy pink blush gives a really youthful glow to the skin. Um, I have a cream blush because I don't really talk too much about cream blushes on my channel, but I think if you have very mature dry skin, this is a great option for blush. I don't think that you have to use cream blush if you're over the age of a certain age. I'm not saying that you can't use powder blush. I still use powder blush, but I wanted to just show you how to apply cream blush because it is a great alternative for very dry, mature skin. So I have this color by MAC, it's called Lady Blush. So this basically checks all the boxes of what I'm about to talk about. The tone of it is a nice peachy pink. It's very soft. It gives a really natural glow from within. So I'm going to apply this with a uh, brush, but you could also use a beauty blender or your finger to apply it. So I found this MAC 170 brush. Um, honestly, I haven't picked this brush up in forever, but it was the best thing I could find near me. And I just press it into the product. I'm also going to dab it on my finger because I don't want to apply too much color. I'm going to kind of smile and I'm going to start kind of on the back of my apples of my cheeks and I'm going to just press it in and blend down. And that's as much color as I need. I did go back a second time, but with blush it's always better to apply very sheerly and add more if you want. So I'm basically pressing it in, working it back, and kind of dragging it down a little bit. So as you can see that gives a very natural like kind of flush from within. You know, it looks like my cheeks have been pinched. You don't really see where the blush starts or stops. On this side of the cheek, what you don't want to do is apply something that's too bright and too shimmery. Um, I just grabbed this Becca uh, After Glow palette. I don't even know if they still carry this, but this blush right here is very, very bright. Um, it has quite a bit of metallic to it, so, and I'm going to apply this right on the apple of my cheek. Okay, so you can see the difference in the two cheeks right here. This kind of looks more like natural flesh to the skin. This looks like makeup. All right, now let's go ahead and dust this bake away because I want to show you guys highlighter and what to do and what not to do. If you are someone that really likes to highlight the cheek area, there are a few tips that I have for you and a few things that you might be doing that are not really doing you any favors. So I had a question recently on my channel about how to use highlighters um, when you're in your 50s or 60s, and I recommend using, if you can, a cream or a liquid highlighting product over a powder product. One that I really like is the NARS Hot Sand Illuminator. I've had this for probably about a year, but I don't know if this is limited edition or not, but I know that NARS does carry highlighters like this, whether they have this shade or not. 
but it's just a very nice, I'll show you, very nice, soft highlight. And you can use this many different ways. If you want to keep it really subtle, you can put it on your skin before you apply foundation. That's a great, great way. Sometimes I'll mix it in with my moisturizer and then apply foundation. I wish I had done this before I put this on, but I totally forgot. So I'm just going to show you how to apply it over foundation. So I just take a little bit on my finger and actually dab it on my hand. I don't go directly from the tube to my skin because, again, especially with highlighter, less is more. And I'm just going to kind of find my cheekbone right there. I'm going to apply it, and then I'm going to use a bare finger to blend it in. I want to keep this very soft. I don't want you to really see makeup as my highlighter. I want it to just look like my skin is glowing. So that is what the highlighter looks when applied. Very soft, very sheer, very natural. What you don't want to do is take a powder highlighter that's very intense and apply it very heavily on the skin. One that I have here is by uh, the Balm Cosmetics. This is Mary Luminizer. This was all the rage a couple years ago. A lot of other products have come out since and taken its place, I think, but um, they're all the same. So what you don't want to do is grab a lot of this and go like this. Oh, that's too much. I don't think anyone's going to apply it that heavy anyway, but sometimes I see this on Instagram or YouTube and yes, I get that it's eye-catching and it grabs your attention to look at that photo, but it just doesn't look good on the skin, you guys. Ooh. Okay, so what that did is it just brings all the attention to my texture in my skin. I mean, you can see every little pore. Do you guys see that? Look closely at my skin there. That is not cute, you guys. That is not cute. And that's what's going on now because of the heavy foundation, the heavy concealer, the baking, the highlighter. It's just too, too much. So this is what not to do, what you can do. Okay, so moving along to eyes. I do have my eye makeup on. I think I just wanna share a couple of tips when it comes to eyes. I get a lot of questions about how to wear a shimmer on the eyes. And I think it's a great question. I think there used to be this myth out there that you shouldn't wear a shimmer on the eyes if you have mature eyelids or you have eyelids that have a lot of texture. I don't really believe that anymore. I don't think that your only option is matte eyeshadows. I still think that you can wear beautiful satin shades or you could wear like, um, shades that have a little bit of a sheen, but I would stay away from really metallic shadows. For the most part. However, if you do love metallic shadows and you don't want to give them up, you know what? Makeup is meant to make you feel beautiful. Please don't take what I'm saying as like the end all be all. You know, I, these are just tips, but uh, really it's your face. It's your makeup. If you feel good in it, rock it on. I just want to preach that. Uh, but if you do wear really metallic, there is a certain way that you can place it to make it look uh, just more youthful. So I just grabbed this NARS uh, dual intensity eyeshadow. It's such a pretty eyeshadow. It's uh, the color Dion. And I'm going to use my finger and I'm just going to pop this like right in the center of my lid. So I just press, press, press. Now if I want to blend it a little bit, I'm going to take a clean finger and I'm just going to blend out the edges. So my placement is all about keeping that right in the center of my eyelid. What you don't want to do is apply that like all over the eye. What I do want to say, though, is that we all have different skin and different skin types. You know, I've seen women in their 40s that have better skin than women in their 30s. I've seen women in their 50s that have amazing skin. You know, it's it's really not like once you hit this age, you can't do this. I don't want to come off that way. Uh, but if you are dealing with some of these issues, then these are some tips that will help you. Okay, next for eyeliner, um, I think the biggest tip that I have is for your lower lash line. I never really use black on my lower lash line. I always use like a brown and then I soften it with an eyeshadow. Also, I always line my inner rim with a brightening eye pencil and that is going to help brighten your eye and give you a more youthful look. So I do have my inner rim already lined and I have left that pencil downstairs so we're just going to go with that. But on this side, I'm going to show you what lining it with black does to the eye. Also, I would definitely avoid liquid liners or gel liners down there. I'm gonna use a black pencil, but I still wouldn't use black. So if you were to use black, you know, harsh black eyeliner really just closes the eye up. So using black on the lower lash line really just makes the eye look smaller, more closed, it looks very harsh. Especially when it comes to the eyes, you want everything to be soft. You want to have soft lines. That's gonna give you the look of a more youthful appearance. So instead, what I like to do is use a brown pencil. This one actually has a little bit of sparkle to it, which I think is nice. And I just line the outer corner, and then I go over it with a either a clean brush to soften it, or I'll even use an eyeshadow to soften it. That's just gonna give a softer look. It's just gonna make the eyes look softer, more open, more awake. Okay, so when it comes to lips, 
As we get older, our lips tend to get smaller. We can get fine lines around our lips. Lips kind of droop a bit. So what you don't want to do is use a very heavy, matte, dark lipstick shade that is just going to bring attention to that. I really like to use shades that are a little brighter, pink, peach, um, it doesn't have to be a gloss, but just a lipstick that is very hydrating to the lips that'll plump the lips up versus something that's matte and just going to draw attention to them. So I would probably stay away from liquid lipsticks if you do have issues with your lips being very textured or have a lot of lines around them. Liquid lipsticks are not really going to be your friend um, or heavy matte lipsticks. So for the dew side, I'm going to take a lip pencil that's about the shade of my lips, maybe a little bit darker, and I'm going to create a soft line around my lips and then I'm going to kind of sketch in a little bit. This liner is really creamy, so I can even use my finger to kind of blend it out. And for the sake of really demonstrating to you the differences, I'm not going to put the lipstick on. I'm going to go and do the other side of what not to do. So for this, I'm taking a darker lip pencil, and I'm going to do a harsh line around my lips. So I don't know if you can tell between the two sides which side looks a little fuller. I would say the right side versus the left. Okay, for lipsticks, I'm just going to use a, a sheer tinted gloss. Not, I'm not saying you can't use lipsticks. You certainly can, but I would look for very hydrating. Or if you do, if you do like mattes for the stain power, look for a creamier matte versus a very dry matte. But for this look, I feel like the lip liner gives me the color that I need. I'm just going to top it with a sheer uh, gloss with a little bit of color. This is by Face Atelier. And I'm just gonna. And then for the other side, I'm taking a darker matte shade. This is by MAC, and it is in the shade Taupe. And this is kind of just like a real brown matte brick color. Okay. I know it's hard to see when you do. I should have probably done one lip in one way and then done an, uh, one lip in the, the other. The overall theme really is just applying your makeup in a softer manner. Uh, really just using the products that you need but not using more than you need. And really understanding that when it comes to makeup and mature skin, more is not always better. In fact, more can work against you in a lot of ways. I hope this tutorial demonstrates that. I hope that you can look at the right side and clearly see that this is a prettier, softer, more youthful application than the left side. Please let me know what you learned from this video down below. Um, I would love to read your comments on camera and read your questions and address them. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.